So my mum's originally from Melbourne. So as a child, I grew up traveling back and forth. And on the odd occasion, we would go along the Great Ocean Road. When I heard they put on an event where they shut down the whole road and let runners run all the way from Lawn to Apollo Bay, that had to go on the bucket list straight away. So the year is 2019. I've been running a few ultra events at this point and I thought it was time to start ticking some off the bucket list. And the first one on the list was the Great Ocean Road Marathon. I prepped for months and was ready to go. And then the whole world got shut down by COVID. And so all the running events I'd planned for the first half of the year got canceled. So life got busy over the next couple of years. We had another baby, my second son started school and work got crazy busy. So traveling was just off the table. We jumped forward three years to the year 2023 and I was finally able to sign up for the Great Ocean Road Ultra Marathon again. As much as it was an event for me to run, we wanted to make it a family holiday too. With a car full of kids and a few more years of running under my belt, off we went. Now I didn't have the GoPro for this trip, so I've put together a combination of all the photos and videos for you to enjoy. There are five of us, including a baby. If you've ever traveled with a baby, you know how much stuff you need to take. So we crammed everyone and everything into the car and off we went. The drive went quite well for a car full of young kids. We left nice and early, made a stop at the Bordertown Bakery for breakfast. With full bellies and stretched legs, it was back into the car and on to Apollo Bay. Here we are boys, we're driving right at it. You gonna play chicken with the windmill? <laughs> Don Quixote style? Charging windmills. Turbine. I know, but <laughs> Don Quixote didn't have turbines back then. It's turbine time! It's turbine. It's blowing us down the Do you know road. what? Oh. It's, it's turbine time. The kids were blown away by the size of the turbines. As the kids had a nap, Beck and I enjoyed some us time. As we often do on road trips, we discuss life and the running adventure I was about to go on. Because I was unable to prepare my body while in the car, I prepared my mind for the challenge I was about to face in two days time. One of our favorite parts of this trip was traveling through the rainforest. There were constant roadworks for kilometers. So we were forced to go pretty slow, but no complaints from us because it was absolutely gorgeous. After over 10 hours of travel time, we finally arrived at Apollo Bay to some of the most beautiful views in Australia. This just made it even more exciting. After getting set up in our quaint little accommodation, we had some dinner and got some rest before the couple of full days to come. The next day started with the 1.5 kilometer kids gallop, a great way for the families to be a part of this epic event. We stretched and warmed up together, just like dad's big races, but this time the focus was on them. They even got their own race bibs just to make it feel even more official. They look so cool, ready to race. Hey, winners! 
Look at all the colours, Grayson. You're, yeah, yeah you've got a medal. Aubrey, where's your medal? You got a medal? You guys earned that. You ran so good. Was, yeah. The boys did great. They ran the whole 1.5 kilometres and loved every minute of it. You can imagine how proud I was. As awesome as it was to get their own medals, I think they were just as excited to get free kites that they were able to colour themselves and fly on the beach. Once the excitement of the boys' first official run subsided, it was off to the Ottawa Fly treetop walk. We had such a good time adventuring through the forest, finding tiny villages, looking at dragons, and seeing some amazing views. There are also some pretty serious hills, so pushing the pram up and down them was a great way for me to stretch out my legs the day before my race. So for our honeymoon 17 years ago, we had been gifted a stay at a villa in Apollo Bay while traveling. And we also went to the treetop walk. We were a lot less fit and healthy back then. And uh, I've told the story many times of a family with multiple children and a pram that had powered up the hill past us at a speed we weren't able to keep up with. So one of the best experiences of this trip was realizing we were now that family and we were able to power up the hill the very same way they did. As we finished up the day, we came home to make our dinner and I'd made one of my staples before a big run. Mashed potato, chickpeas, beetroot, corn and a bunch of salad topped with vegan mayo. After a good sleep, as good as you can get the night before a big race, the morning of the ultra came around and we caught the bus to the start line and started to warm up. The toughest part of the morning was dealing with the nerves and the crazy lineups for the toilet. After watching the sun come up and warming up with some hill runs, it was time to corral at the start line. As much as the morning felt like it had gone forever, the start of the race came very quick and we were off while i was having the best race of my life the kids were relaxing in their pajamas If I had signed up for the just the marathon distance, I would have been on track for my first sub 3 hour 30 marathon. But the fun of this ultra is to get the extra 18 Ks, you turn off the marathon at two different points and they run you up mountains. And these extra turnoffs only start after about 30 kilometers, giving me a final time of five hours 46. Not bad for a trail runner on the road. I think I had a great race strategy. I took water every time there was a water station and I went out with a pocket full of gels, which I had one roughly every eight kilometers. It was cold and very windy along the coast, so I wore a hat and gloves, but the rest of my gear was perfect for my body temperature. Although I did lose my hat to the wind twice and had to chase it for a few meters. I couldn't believe it, but they had one of my favorite treats as a teenager, only a few meters from the finish line. Dippin' Dots, tiny little ice cream balls. They were just so good after a hard run. We had a very tasty Chinese meal for dinner that night. I'll let you imagine how much I ate. And then the effort of the day caught up with me. The next morning was just a quick pack up and load of the car and we were off again, back home. We had a really nice stop at Ararat on the drive home where we had some lunch and explored around the gardens and the playground, of course. I also had an interesting encounter. I started chatting to another dad at the playground and turned out they were from interstate but happened to be traveling to the Adelaide Hills to move into their new home not far from us. What are the chances? Be 
going home. We're going home. From our holiday house. It's the best day ever. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Look at this one. There are some great videos coming of events that I actually did have the GoPro for. And as a side note, at the time of running this event, I had planned out my full running calendar for 2023. But because of my performance on this event, I decided to sign up for the Adelaide Marathon to see if I could get that elusive sub 3.30 marathon time. What a saga that became. But that's a story for another day. Anyway, thanks heaps for watching. I hope these videos entertain you. And more importantly, inspire you to be better every day. See ya.